All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott, your instructor for 152-145 Advanced Java Programming for the Fall 2015 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. So far, we have created our greeting panel, our bagel panel, our toppings panel, and our coffee panel. So, we don't have a main to run the program, but if we did and we ran it right now, it would look like this. And you could choose one or the other of these, one of these four, and zero, one, two, three, or four of these. We don't have the buttons in yet. All right, so the last step, as it says, for us to create this app is to write a class that builds the app's window and calculates or adds the calculate and exit buttons. All right, this class will be called Order Calculator GUI. It'll extend JFrame. It'll use a border layout manager so we can put the, again, the in the north panel, we can put the greeting panel. In the east panel, I'm sorry, in the west panel, we can put the bagel panel. In the center panel, we can put the toppings panel. And in the north panel, or pane, whatever you want to call it, we can put the coffee panel. All right, so that's what's next. So we're going to add that right now. It says we have not created a custom panel to hold the calculate and exit buttons. The reason is the event listener must call the get bagel cost, the get topping cost, and the get coffee cost methods. In order to call those methods, the event listener must have access to the bagel panel, topping panel, and coffee panel objects created in this side of this order GUI. The approach taken in this example is to have the class itself create the buttons. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. All right. When we get done with that, we're going to add the. Uh, when we get done with that, we're going to add the splash screen. So as I jump back into here. We currently have bagel panel, coffee panel, well, in order, greeting panel, bagel panel, topping panel, coffee panel. So I'm going to click new, do one more class in here. And again, this one is going to be called order calculator later GUI. And this particular class, when we get down to the bottom of it, will have a main in it. So I might as well just add it. All right, so there we go. And I'm just going to add my own comment up on the top here. So this is the order calculator GUI class. It will bring together together each of the other Java classes in this program, namely the greeting panel, bagel panel, Topping panel and coffee panel classes. It will also both uh, contain the main method and it will give the user their final total. Okay, just kind of off the top of my head, but that'll be fine. All right. So, do a few housekeeping things here. Begin order calculator GUI. End, end, order calculator GUI, begin main, end main, okay, all right, 
So, this has got to extend J frame. Now remember earlier, everything that we were doing was extending panel. All right, so we get an, an error right away, and it says syntax error. Annotative name expected. Not sure exactly what that error is. How about extends? Okay. Well, we'll import that. So there's our first import statement. And now all of our errors are gone. So, as always, create program variables. So let's start private bagel panel bagels. Now remember what we're doing right there is we are creating something of that is of this type right here and that's what we're going to do for all of these. So private topping panel toppings. Try to see if we can line these up at least somewhat. Private coffee panel. Coffee. Private greeting panel. Lovely. Greeting. Oh, they want it to be banner. Fine. Private J panel. That'll be our button panel. That'll hold our, I think it's our calculate and our exit buttons. Private J button calc button, which will be our calculate button. And private J button exit button to hold our exit button. Now we get errors here because we have to, again, import those particular associated files. So we just brought in J frame and J button. I'm sorry, J panel and J button. All right. So that's all that. We also want to have our program constant. And since I've been putting the other ones in top, which typically is what programmers do, create program constant. All right. Private final. Double tax rate equals 0 0.06. So there's 6% tax rate. All right, so we've got all that. All right, I'm down toward the bottom of page 822. All right, so I'm going to come in here and again. This will be the constructor. It's fine like that. And again, we'll put a comment here that says begin constructor. constructor that title we'll look at in a bit so specify action for close button and basically what this is saying is if we click that X in the upper right hand corner right here we want the program to stop running now we have to create a border layout Whoops, layout. 
manager. We have to also import up here border layout. All right. We're getting there. I'm on the top of page 823. Create custom panels. I'm wanting for me that greeting or greetings. There's greeting. Greeting panel. Oh, it's okay now. All right. stuff I like it to line up now we're going to get an error when we do this because we're calling build button panel and we have not yet built it portion. You've seen this before. I already showed you where the stuff was. Whoops. All right. We're going to add the bagels to the west portion. And I spelled bagels wrong. these that you see right here that are on the screen. The north, the west, the center, and the east were pre-built by us. But now we're going to add the button panel. And again, we might get an error here because we have not yet created the particular routine that's going to lay all that out for us. All right. Now we're also going to pack the contents of the window Pack window, contents, and display. So it's just pack and set visible true, which is probably the most important line in the program because if you leave it off, even if your program is 100% correct, it's invisible so it won't show. in here now and we're going to use this and say the build button panel method builds the button panel which is exactly what we want to do here setting up a new J panel object.
buttons. Now again, we'll, for a second here, we'll pr we may have an error because the J button may not have been defined yet. I don't think it has been. Let's calculate. not giving us any error and that's good. Register action listeners. Now one thing just just so you know this when I this will be the end of the lectures on chapter 11 GUI part 1. In GUI part 2 I'm going to show you I'm going to build the same interface but I'm going to try to see if I can build the thing in about one tenth of the time that I took to build this to begin with. And then we're going to go back, and in that particular set of, of lectures, we're going to concentrate more on what the code is about. All right, so register. Again, we're getting these errors now because we have not yet written those routines. We're going to do that in just a minute. write a separate class to do this, but what we're going to do is do basically what most of the time people in Java do, and that is we're going to create an inner class, which means we're going to create a class inside of the class we're in. And this will say private inner class that handles event when the user clicks the calculate button. And then when we get done, we'll have a, a one like it, but what happens when they click the exit button? All right, so here will be our first one. This is the much longer. The other one literally has like about one line in it. Notice it's a private class, but since we already have a public class, You can't have one public class within another public class, but within this public class, which is where we are right now, we can have a private class. That's totally legit. This will implement Action Listener, which is exactly what we implement. All right, that's exactly what we implement when we help button listener implements action listener. Oh, now they're telling us to put a body in there. Okay, that's fine. Not sure why we have the error for the first one. But we'll, we'll see if we can fix that momentarily. Okay. for just a second, so I'll be right back.
All right, so this is what we want to do when the Calculate button is clicked. We want to figure out the subtotal by adding their bagel cost, their topping cost, and their coffee cost. That subtotal will then be multiplied by our 6% tax rate to figure out the tax. We'll add the subtotal to our tax, and that will give us our final total, which we'll format with a decimal, and we'll print out all the information. And as you can notice, for the other one that we do, it'll look just like this. That's it. So as I move back here, this is our action performed method. So I'm going to here begin action performed. Friends there also. And I'm going to end action performed. I'm not sure why I'm still getting errors here. Add unimplemented methods. Okay, well, maybe it's because we're not done with this yet, so let's see. Create program of variables. Double subtotal. Double tax. Double total. Calculate subtotal. So that subtotal is going to be equal to bagels dot get bagel cost and we want to add to that toppings dot get topping cost and we want to add to that coffee dot get coffee cost all right that'll give us the subtotal so again what that's doing and hopefully that just makes sense to all of you is that's basically saying what we want to do here is we want to add whatever one of these is checked and remember that was like 125 and 150 or something like that to whatever of these were checked and I think that was 50, 25, 75 and 75 and whatever of these were checked I think that was nothing well that would be nothing I think that was 125, 125 and two dollars or something like that all right so we're just trying to add all of the associated values. So that's our subtotal. Then we have to calculate our sales tax. And what we're, the way we're going to calculate our tax is it's our subtotal times that 6% tax rate. All right. Then we want to calculate our total. Which is total equals the subtotal plus whatever we paid for tax. Create a decimal format object to format the output. Now we're going to get an error when we first do this, and we'll again let the compiler find where that decimal format thing is for us. So I'm just going to come right here, create glass interface change, and create glass decimal. Well, we'll find it. Just you have to take my word for it. Equals new decimal format. This is way over here. This is way too wide. I want to close that. There we go. And that'll be, we can do this any way we want. And I see what the author did. I'm not sure why he did it that way, but that's fine. 
Uh, we'll just put 0, 0, 0.00. I'm going to make it a little bigger than he did. Even though I don't think it could be that big, just to be safe. Now let's see if we... Create class, change, add type, change to decimal format. Why doesn't it like that? Oh, because I spelled it full mat. That might help. Now import that. There we go. And then finally, display charges. Now we want all these charges to have a dollar sign. The author hard codes the dollar sign in. I'm just going to put it right here. Okay, so J option pane dot show option dialog. Again, we're going to get an error there. Don't worry about it. We'll get all that fixed in just a minute. No, just put each one of these on its own line. Subtotal. And again, we don't need the dollar sign now like they show in the book. Plus dollar dot format. Subtotal. Plus tax. And I, I'm just going to pad mine out so that they do line up here. Maybe you, you don't have to do that, but I'm just hopefully it'll make it a little easier to read. Dollar dot format tax and total. Dollar dot format total, and that's everything. All right, so that's. We have to add this, add arguments. Oh, what do we have here? J option pane. We'll have to go back and look at that in just a second. I just want to clean that up. There we go. All right, so let's fix this. Show, it's a show message, not a show option. So it's a show message dialog. Hopefully it'll clear that up, and it did. All right, so now we've finished our first inner class. Now we've got to do our other inner class. So I'm going to, where I put this, I'm going to copy this down, all of that. I'm going to get an error when I first do it because we already have one by that name, but that's okay. And let's see. thing that we had down there for build button panel this and build button panel now we're probably going to get an error right now because I have this in here twice I thought I did maybe I don't all right so here's our build button there's our end build button this should have all been moved over. Which means I can now put this on one line, I believe, which make it much easier to read. probably get all this on one line now, but it's going to be close. I still like it over a couple lines. I think it's easier to read that way, so I'm going to do that. Okay.
So I just goofed up. Those so should all be moved over one half space. Sorry. And I'm a little bit of a stickler because to me, when you're trying to debug this, it makes it much easier to have it lined up with some semblance of order to it. So that's what I tried to do. So that goes there. That goes there. Now I can come back and grab all this stuff I grabbed before. Just up to there. Copy it. Now uh, there's two things left to do. One is, no, we don't need this anymore. That was, shouldn't have been. We have to add the code in here now for our exit button, which again is just about one line of code. And then we have to put in our call to main. So this is now exit button listener. All right. Still have the error here. Add unimplemented methods. performed. Didn't like the way I wrote the action performed evidently. That was the problem. So gotta grab that line here, not that, this one, and replace that one with this. everything. Don't need any of this. All right. So, implements action listener. We'll again have our begin and end statements. Saw there's only one line in there at system.exit. Zero, which means normal termination. All right, so that's all done. So the only thing that's left is our main method. All right, so private static void main arg arg. And here we're going to have to instantiate, so say new order calculator GUI, friend friend. All right. So it looks like there's still a couple errors here, but as far as I could, well, there are other ones too. Exit button listener. That should be a big E. Should fix that. okay that looks okay okay I'm gonna give it a spin so save run run and there's my interface let's say we want a whole wheat bagel which is 150 I believe well that's a little funky 
All right, so we'll have to fix that. So in a whole wheat bagel and no coffee, calculate. Oh, that's looking good. Okay. So I can already see a few things that have to end, that have to be fixed here, such as where we put in that um, decimal formatter. This should be pound sign, pound sign zero. That's going to help matters immensely. And after each one of these, we need to put in a line break. I think we're just about finished. Run, run. So, you want no coffee and a weight bagel. $1.25, 7% tax, $1.32. You want a whole wheat. $1.59. Looks good to me. All right, let's order all the toppings. So that was $1.50. This should be $50 and $25, which is $75 and $75 which is 150 and 75 that should be 225 so 225 and 150 is 375 so that looks good all right let's start adding some coffee let's okay so that should be 150 2 dollars 225 3 dollars 375 475 575 i believe and there's our tax 6% 6% on $6 would have been 36 so that looks like it's working correctly, and our exit's working. All right, so that basically, and I'll put all that out there. It's in the book. It's also out there already on the P drive, but I'll save this. And the idea behind this, doing this, was to go over this, doing it the quote hard way, unquote. In the next chapter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild this. And when I do it, I'm going to come in and just to, just to give you a little preview of what I'm going to do here. So everything has been saved. So I'm going to do a file, close all. All right, so it's all closed. And I'm going to come in here and do a file, new, Java project. And I'm going to call this one Brandy's Bagel House 2. Randy's Bagel House 2. All right, and finish. I, I've got to come back. I forgot about that. I've also got to add the splash screen, so I'll do that in a second. But what I want to show you is when we get done and start doing all this stuff, we're going to come down here and we're going to say new, and we're going to say other, and we're going to come down and we're going to use something that's called Window Builder. All right, so that's what we're going to end up doing next time. Now, for right now, I want to close that Brandy's Bagel House, too. Let's just open the Bagel House back up again. All right, and what I want to do now is the last thing that was shown in here, and that was the act of adding the splash screen. All right, not sure exactly where it'll want this added, but I think I know where it is, so we'll see. So I'm going to right mouse click under my source folder. I'm going to choose new. And I'm going to choose file. And I'm going to tell it basically, it says enter the, or select the parent folder. All right, I want it under Brandy's Bagel House. But I want the, uh, let me see if I can do this. I've already got it saved here. So this is what I'm, I'm just going to try to do this. This isn't probably the way I'd recommend doing it, but there's the logo. Right mouse click, and I'm going to choose copy. Then I'm going to come out to here, I'm going to right mouse click, and I'm going to choose paste. So that put it in here. All right? So to display the, spl the splash screen, you use the Java command in the following way when you run the app. So I'm going to have to try to run this from a, a DOS command line, which uh, this will be interesting enough as it is. So uh, CMD, right, okie dokie, uh, all programs, accessories, command prompt, all right.
So I'm going to change to my D drive. Let me check my path right now. Hopefully that what I'm looking for with Java will be in there, but we'll find out. Uh, CD to Java. CD to users. Slash J Scott slash de desktop. CD to Java. DIRB star. There's our brandies. All right, CD to brandies. You'll notice the first time when I did it, I spelled bagel wrong. Well, that's okay. Eh, we'll be able to tell it apart that way. Brandy's B A G L E house. All right, C L S D I R C D to source. C L S D I R. There's the JPEG. Uh, hoo hoo. So it doesn't like what I'm trying to do here. Normally, the stuff would go in my source folder. I'm going to do something again. I'm, I'm going to kind of break a couple rules here, for lack of better words. All right, I'm going to grab all of this stuff that you see right here, even the logo. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. All right. Create a new folder. I'm going to call it BBH for Brandy's Bagel House. I'm going to paste all that stuff. Oh, crud. Well, that's all I pasted in. So let's see if we can go back and grab the other stuff. Copy. Yeah, let's see if we can paste that in. There. Now we've got all, the, all of our files. All right. So. I'm going to grab this, and what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm showing you something I probably even shouldn't be showing you, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to copy that here. I'm going to go back over to the C drive, Program Files, Java, probably that one, bin, and I'm going to paste that in. All right. Now, from my Java prompt, I'm going to say C colon CD to CD to program files star x86 CD to Java CD to JDK star CD to bin CD to BBH. All right. Now, I'm going to see if I can run this, so Java C dot dot up one level, uh, and I've got, to, I've got to recompile every file that I've got in there. So, um, first was bagel panel dot Java, Java C is not, oh, doggone it, oh, dot dot slash java c bagel panel dot java uh, if I was going to say when you get your prompt back that's a good thing alright so that's the first one so that's I've got a compiled version of that one so java c the next one was well we also had greeting panel Dot Java. That should take just a second. There's just that one line in there. All right. We got bagel. We got greeting. We need topping. Panel. Dot Java. And we need coffee. Panel. Dot Java. And we need. Get the name of that 
was, I don't remember. That's it. So. Now, we're, those are all compile lines. They're telling it to compile all of those. So we've compiled these, and we now have to compile order calculator GUI.java. Give me a break. This is cannot find any of these. Good Lord, golly. Cannot find symbol. <laughs> they all should be there. There's our compiled versions, all those class files. They all should be there, but for some reason now, the order calculator can't find it. What I wanted to do was to compile all these, then run it, because if I did that and ran it, the idea was what that should show you is the splash screen first. Okay? I don't know if I can... Let, let, let's try this, because this will be much easier, and this is what I should have done to begin with. All right. I'll have to go into here. And in Google, can I run a Java program with a splash screen from Eclipse? How to set splash screen in Eclipse? That's what I should have done first. Yes, the splash screen has to be named splash.bitmap. It's not ex it's is expected to be in the same plugin as the product. I want to make an explicit choice. Well, like that's no big yet. I can change it to splash.bitmap. I'm going to have to do some reading on this. And ideally, get back to you in the next one. This is getting way too long. I apologize. Sorry about that.